Hello, Bees Bladers! How are you guys and gals today? I hope all is well. Welcome newcomers to the channel. I'm glad you're here and I hope you find this video informative and quite possibly entertaining. But I've had the pleasure of carrying, using, and cutting and all that good stuff with the CJRB Scoria for the last couple of weeks. And it's been very pleasurable. And we'll run through all the goodies and my opinions and see if it helps you decide if this is the knife for you or not. Or maybe you're just like me and you simply enjoy knife content, whether you're thinking of buying one or not. But I have put links to this knife and the other version of this knife. Um, I don't. The other version is Red Coral Micarta. I don't know if that's available right at the moment or not. But like at White Mountain Knives, if they don't have it available, a lot of times you can just click notify me and they'll notify you. Um, also, speaking of which, I have 10% off discount codes at White Mountain Knives, Kaiser Knives at Mojave Outdoor, and KPL Knife Pivot Lube. All right. But all that's down in the description along with my affiliate links to knife maintenance, sharpening supplies, and a bunch of knives that I recommend and that I own and or things that I've bought and you've seen here on the channel. Anyway, back to the Scoria. So this is a new knife released by CJRB in 2021 and a subscriber, John, was generous and sent this to the channel for us to check out. That way you guys could all enjoy it with me. It's a very, very nice looking knife, but we'll go over, uh, take a look here. It has a nice swedge at the top. It has a nice black coating. You see a CJRB, uh, and it has titanium titanium thumb studs, which is very nice. And then I, I believe this uh, pivot collar is also titanium. And really nice contour G10 scales. Would y'all look at them? Just look at them. They're very nice. Let's check out this side. Here's your titanium pocket clip. And then I've, I've been carrying this for two weeks. And the pocket clip, you can see, has a little bit of wear going on. And that's from having it for two weeks. And then down here, what do we have? China. And then you have your uh, serial number, SCRJ1920. And it's AR RPM 9 steel, which I've enjoyed. Now, I haven't done anything to this knife. I haven't adjusted it. I haven't sharpened it. I haven't done anything because it's not mine. So I'm not going to mess with any of that stuff. But let's go over all the good stuff. Now let's first check the weight because I didn't write that down and I forget what it was. So our weight is coming in at a whopping 3.6 ounces, which is a very nice weight. A lot of people don't complain if it's under a certain mark. Uh, I tend to like heavier knives, so it doesn't really bother me. But here's your specs real quick. So from tip to tip, we're eight inches. The blade has a blade length is 3.49 inches. And it's, again, it's AR RPM 9 steel. Your sharpened blade length is 3.14 inches. It has a blade width of 1.05. So it's pretty much one inch. It has a nice drop point blade with an attractive swedge along the spine there. Um, the blade stock thickness is 0.11. So 110 thousandths and a thickness behind the edge of 17 thousandths of an inch. So it's not a laser beam, but it's a very great everyday user, everyday carry knife. It has uh, ceramic ball bearings in the pivot and you do get a titanium pocket clip, which I showed you earlier, and it is tip up and reversible. So you can put it on every, either side, which is very nice. For deployment, you have thumb studs and a flipper tab, the old flipper rooney. Um, this, uh, let's see, it's an in-house design and it's made in China. So about the fit and finish. So the blade, this coating is a, is a black PVD coating. And it, it really adds to the overall aesthetics of the knife. I mean, would y'all look at it? Just look at it. It is a good looking knife. It is pretty attractive. And we'll do some size comparisons and we'll see what it looks like next to the uh, Feldspar here in just a minute. Um, now, this, this titanium clip, I don't know if they all do this or if that's just what they start doing with wear. But I've noticed that it didn't take very long for it to get some marks on it. But the lockup is good. The lockup on this, on this blade is about 50%. Let's see if we can do this here. There you go. The lockup's about 50%. There's no lock st stick to be felt whatsoever. And this has n nested liners, which is uh, makes makes it look very nice. And you can see these nice big old milled out spots right there, right there, and right there. And there's nothing milled out on the clip side, but you definitely have it on the inside right there. And just from the top of the knife, you can barely see. Let's see. Let's see if we can see in there. Can you see in there at all? Let's see if we can do it this way. There you go. There are your ceramic ball bearings, which make it very smooth, very, very smooth. Now there's no blade play up or down, but there is some blade play from side to side, just a tad. 
just a little bit. Let's see if I can hold it. Just a tad. I mean, it's it's not as much as it looks like with my hand, but it is noticeable. You can feel it. You can feel the blade play. Now, if I squish really hard right up here, that blade play goes away. So it could be it just needs a little tightening, but it's not my knife. I'm not messing with it. So that is one thing that I definitely notice. Um, yeah, I'm guessing a little tighten and that's going to go away. But let's do some size comparisons real quick. Um, a quick housekeeping note. The way you support the channel, and by that I mean is you support our channel, is you tap the like button or tap the dislike button, whichever. And remember to say something in the comments, even if it's hello bees or saying hi to everyone else or letting me know what you think about the video or this knife. But that's a way to support. But back to getting some size comparisons here. We'll put up the regular suspects. Here's the Spyderco Tenacious. And the Spyderco Manix 2. The Manix 2. So you can see it's got a good length. It's a nice full-size knife. Definitely. And, you know, comparable. These are all pretty close. And here's some more. Here's the Spyderco Endura. Very Endura. If you have an Endura that, you know, the sharpened length is almost identical. And your handle length is pretty darn close. You can see this is a good everyday size knife. Here's the here's the Pilar 3. Smaller. Eh, you know, considerably smaller on each side. You lose about a half an inch on both sides there. And here's one that a lot of you guys and gals have is the QSP Penguin. And then I'll show you two more and then we'll see what it looks like next to the Feldspar. So here's the Civivi button lock. And you talk about similar. They're very, you know, there's a lot of similarities. And here's the Civivi Imperium. So we're, we're looking at, you know, knives that are very similar in size and shape, handle length and all that good stuff. All right, now let's check out next to the Feldspar. So this, I think, is the biggest question that everyone has and that I had are what are the differences? You know, one costs like $40, $42. The other one costs $79, $80. So this one, the Scoria is twice the price of the Feldspar. So... One of the things that I was considering was, is it worth twice twice as much? Well, here's a couple of the comparisons for you. Let's do this. As far as your blade, there's not much difference, except you get a finger choil with the Scoria. Now, as far as sharpened length, you get a tad more sharpened length because with the Feldspar, you don't have that finger choil. So you have that going on. Now, they both have thun studs, but the Scoria has a flipper tab. You do not have a flipper tab with the Feldspar. You can see here they look very similar. So you get the addition of the thumb, the thumb stud. Now this, this Feldspar, this is D2 steel, okay? So you're going up from D2 to AR RPM 9. So there's another thing. So you have an extra deployment method and you have better steel, which is arguable depending on what, what your preference is. You know, that, that's a whole different conversation. And then on this side, a big difference is this titanium clip. I'm, I'm guessing that is something that definitely added weight. Now, as far as aesthetics, they're both very nice looking. They're very both, very both? They're very both nice looking knives. <laughs> and this one has a nice accent around the pivot collar. The Feldspar does. Now, something else that a lot of people notice, and here's something that we'll show, is the thickness. Now, with the Scoria, you definitely get a lot thinner profile. It is still contoured, and by contoured, I mean it's a little, you know, the handle's slightly rounded like this. And it's, it's a lot less as far as thickness than the Feldspar, and let's check that out. So here's the Scoria, and here's the Feldspar. You can see it's considerably thinner, a lot thinner. You definitely lose a lot of weight with this guy than you have with the with the Feldspar. So you it weighs less. It has arguably better steel, depending on your preference. It has an extra deployment method, and it has a titanium pocket clip. The pocket clip I haven't had any issues with. It was in and out of the pocket just fine. Um, there were no problems there. It's a nice strong clip. It's not too strong, like too stiff where you can't get in and out without using two hands. I don't really like it when you have to use two hands to get it in and out of the pocket. So that's really good. There's no problems with that. So next, let's go talk about deployment here. So here's all the ways that you can deploy this knife. 
you can, I like I'm trying to remember, there's always the two-handed. So you can two-handed open it. It's very easy to pinch open, which I enjoy. I like opening a knife like that, slow roll it open. Don't even have to use the thumb stud. Then you have the thumb stud, obviously, which is really easy. The action, it's very drop shutty, you know, not, not as, it's not the smoothest, you know, but look, I mean, it's, you guys can't really see it because of this angle, but I mean, it shuts really nice. So the one swoop and it's down. So there's that. The reverse flick, super easy with the middle finger. There's the reverse flick. And then you have your flipper tab. You can push button it. Very easy on this example. And then you can also light switch it, which is very nice, very nice. So as you can see, your options are just all over the place as for how many ways you can open it. But I do have something to note, and that is the detent. Another way you can open it, which I don't think is a preferred method by any means, is doing that. And I, I'm, not, I'm not going nuts with it, but I am, and it's hard for me to do it at this angle with you guys. But see there what happens? Now let me give you another example of this detent. If I just push it right here and I'm not pushing hard, there's your detent. So I suspect that the detent on this example is a little weaker than some I've seen. But if you know your knife and, and you know all you have to do is push, it pops right out. There's no issue. And I didn't catch this when I first opened it. I did notice when I first opened it that it kind of opens slow and deploys a little slower. It has actually loosened up a little bit since I got it, you know, since I unboxed it. It opens really well. It's just, I think the detent is just a tad light, which isn't bad. It's not, not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not a detent diva. So there you go. There's your action. I mean, you can, oh, you can also do the flick my bick. You can open this thing. It's a, it's a pretty good fidget knife. Now, as far as fidgeting and is, I know for me, that's a factor, you know, besides all of, all of the other things, cutting, all that good stuff. Um, as far, and mentioning cutting, it cuts well. It's not the thinnest blade. You know, it has a shorter profile, so it's not the thinnest, sliciest blade ever, but it does a really great job. I've cut several boxes with it. I've cut the typical everyday thing. I'm open package packages. Um, I cut up a couple apples yesterday. I cut an apple up today. It does a really good job of splitting that. But, you know, it's not it's not like a big, tall profile, super thin blade. But you're starting out with a nice, thin blade stock. So the cutting geometry is not that bad. For an everyday carry, it's, it's really good as far as the cutting goes. Now, as far as my uh, hand size, we're four inches from here to here, three and a half from here to here. And then from right here, to the end of my finger is seven and a quarter. So that gives you an idea of my hand size. So there is what it looks like in my hand. It fits comfortably in my hand. Let me back out here just a little bit. Move stuff out of the way. So there it is in my hand. You can see I have plenty of room. It's pretty comfortable. Um, you can choke up. I've, I tended pretty much every time I used it, except for when I was cutting an apple and I was cutting an apple like this and then I did it like this, you know, just checking it out. It's comfortable to use. Now, a couple notes that um, I notice when I really get a grip on it to cut something and also Mrs. B's notice is the inside of your handles right here, they're, they're softened, they're chamfered. See right here on the inside, which I appreciate that a lot, except for one place where they didn't do it. And this is not the first time or the first knife by any means. It's like they'll soften the inside edges of the G10 but they never do right here behind the liner lock for some reason. And that is kind of an area right there. See where it's grabbing my fingernail? That's an area where I can feel it. It's kind of hot spotty, not too bad, but it's definitely something to mention. The pocket clip doesn't bother me, but this hardness right here, I almost wish this was a little less, little less bent this way and was kind of brought back just a tad. But overall, it's comfortable. You're not going to be, it's not like a heavy duty use knife. This is an everyday carry knife. So I don't have any complaints as far as the ergos. It fits my hand nicely. Your fingers fall in line. There's no complaint with that. You can choke up really easy. Has a very nice sharpening choil. You can sharpen this thing forever before you ever get to any kind of blunt plunge grind. Plenty of room for your finger. I have pretty chunky fingers. There's plenty of room for choking up. So that's all good. This is good stuff. So overall, do I like this knife? Yes, I do. 
I think it's a pretty sweet knife. Uh, it's a pretty good example, a really nice example of CJRB. It's good to fidget with. Um, one other little note is the the uh, liner lock right here. It's not the softest in the world when you come in with your finger. Um, if you look here by pushing it, it's a little it's a little tough. You can see what it's pushing pushing in on my thumb considerably there. So if you if you're a big fidgeter, just know that by fidgeting a lot, that this lock bar does take a little bit of pressure to clear. It doesn't grab, but it takes a little pressure. But I have done a lot of a lot of fidgeting with this knife. It's really comfortable. I've enjoyed using it, and I'm sure its owner is glad to have it back when it's on its way here tomorrow. So there's my take on it, guys. What's your take on it? Give me your two cents. Do you think you're going to get one? Is it worth twice as much as the Feldspar? That is the million-dollar question. But you guys, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate all of you very much. Remember to live life in the present. Keep a Band-Aid handy. And don't cut yourself.